You're listening to Wrestling to the Max. Alert, alert, clear all channels. This is an exclusive pay per view review. How you like that? And your host, Gary Vaughn, Sean Garmer, and Paul Leeser. Sorry for the technical issues. This is W2 and Special. I think this is number six. Wow. Money in the Bank review. That's fried. Six, and you know what? It seems like we've done more of these, but in the past, we haven't titled them special or anything like that. So, yeah, technically. I count them from when we started doing it for WrestleMania. I count the extras as separate. So okay, that's fair well, enough. Well, also, there have been more extra things. WWE has been putting out more pay-per-view type things lately, so that's part of the reason why, I think. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's uh, true. It, it seems like every other week we get a yeah, special. Yeah, it is every week. <laughs> Holy crap, every, yeah, I think this like month, months. like... <laughs> this <laughs> month, I think we will, we will have done one every Sunday. Wow. If wow. you add in ROH this Sunday coming up, and then Slammiversary the next Sunday, man. Yep. <laughs> it's crazy. We haven't had a Sunday off, and that's okay. We love doing this for you guys. We love talking wrestling, so that's why we enjoy this. Uh, we are totally excited about talking about Money in the Bank. This is going to be a lot of fun for us to go through and kind of you know see what we predicted and if it was correct or incorrect or how dumb we look. I don't know. Uh, but this a is lot of be us awesome. look very dumb. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> that's correct. And everybody, that is Brandon uh, Bisco Bing. He is joining yeah. us tonight, and uh, we are so happy to have him back on the show. Uh, you know, usually with these big, you know, pay per view reviews, we've had man, you know, about seven of us doing these reviews, and uh, we started a little later, uh, but that's okay. Um, hey, it means we each get a little bit more time to talk about everything. That's fine with us. Uh, but you know what, man, I'm totally excited about talking about this. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. While I wait around, let's just jump into this thing. Are you guys okay with that? Yep, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Well, let's start by talking about everybody's favorite match on the card, the kickoff uh, show match. I mean, this is one of the best matches you guys have ever seen. Okay, did you bring your pillow? I hope you did, because it was nothing. Uh, let's be honest with you guys. Everybody knew this. We we got into this on last Thursday's show, honestly, yeah. guys. It, this is nothing. This was made to be nothing. We had no reason to care about it. Uh, so let's just basically skip to the end here. I, uh, I will, all, mm-hmm. all I have to say about this match is I bow to your, your superior intelligence at, by saying the – all of you guys, I was the only one that said King Barry was going to win this match. And you guys were correct. Our truth wins, and King Barry continues dropping further down, despite the fact that, again, King of the Ring should mean something, but it doesn't anymore. Then, so that's pretty much all I've got to say about this match. Yeah, and, and you know what? There's not a whole lot to say about it, but you're correct. You know, Wade Barrett was the guy that, you know, I think a lot of people did think he was going to win because of the fact that, you know, honestly, he's higher on the food chain than our truth But our truth does think. pull out the win. Yeah, well, you would think. Uh, but that roll-up pin did it. Once again, I mean, Paul, come on. Uh, here we go. Your favorite move in the professional, your f- favorite pin of all time, the roll-up pin. Uh, I mean, I believe it's Sean who's bugged by the distraction roll-up. Uh. Is it you, Sean? Yes, that's me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> at any rate though that you're right this match was nothing I, I watched the last three minutes and it did absolutely nothing for me as i was late getting to the pre-show but uh yeah no, nobody cared the crowd didn't care i certainly didn't care the people i was watching it with didn't care so why should we <laughs> i uh i think watch i me. watched the pre-show on a delay and I went and just started fast-forwarding, and I fast-forwarded through half of the match, and I felt like I 
Got enough of it there. Didn't miss anything? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I didn't miss anything. (laughs) (laughs) So why keep talking about it, guys? We had to talk about it because it's there. We don't want to skip over anything, but there you go. That's the complete conversation. I think Kibo probably would have been totally okay if we did skip it. (laughs) Yeah, but you know what? I do want to mention something in the pre-show, and you're correct. I'm sorry, people, for boring you for the first five to ten minutes of the show. Uh, but there is something interesting. I did like the fact that we did get a little Dusty Rhodes talk in this whole pre-show. Um, and it was kind of... I kinda, mean, you expected kinda, it. It's the first thing since he died, so, you know. Yeah, we, exactly. And we, we all totally expected it. But I, I think the most touching thing was, you know, everybody kind of given their own experience was with Dusty Rhodes. And, uh, you know... Just looking at the the fact that um, we almost had a guy cry at the end of his discussion, uh, you know, I, I just it speaks volumes to how much this guy matters to these guys. You know, uh, they're trying to be professionals, they're trying to get through this, but man, I mean, for you know, I'm, I'm blanking on his name. Um, oh, come on, help me, Brandon. Did you check I, out? I didn't wa- I didn't see that part. I also got to the pre-show late, so. Starts with a C. He's the guy that just ran. Corey was Graves. On E6. Corey Graves, thank you. Yeah. Corey Graves almost cried. Uh, so, I mean, very, very touching. Yeah, I cried when it happened, so. Well, that, no, that. With him. <laughs> don't blame anybody for that. Um, so I just think it's, it just shows you the volume that this guy mattered to everybody. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into this thing, guys. We do start the show with the the 10 bell salute uh, to Dusty uh, that was touching as well uh, very heart wrenching you know just seeing all the superstars on stage and you could just see in their faces how upset they were and it just it, I think it tugged at my heart a lot I mean it almost made me want to cry right there well uh, I think the see. other thing I think the mm-hmm. other thing about it was the fact that it was so sudden you know Dusty has been around and he's been on TV even fairly recently. I mean, I think it was what in, I forget at what pay-per-view it was, but I think like back in December or January or something, he was helping out when uh, Cody and Goldust had their whole falling out. And he was there at ringside being their manager and whatnot. So, you know, it wasn't a situation where, oh, he's sick and everyone knows he's going to die. It was a situation, it was a road warrior, or uh, not road warrior, uh, ultimate warrior type of situation where it was just so sudden and shocking. Mm -hmm. It was, and I think that's exactly why, you know, they were all, you know, still solemn and still trying to work through it. You're correct, Brandon. And, you know, I just love the fact that, you know, the commentators and everybody stood up and they were just so, you know, res- respectful. And the video package was amazing. Uh, I love that video package that they did for Dusty Rhodes. It was perfect, you know, to have his sons uh, at the Hall of Fame being represented in that video, too. That was very, very touching. So great way to start the show, just in tribute to such a great man. Uh, but another great way to start the show is with your big Money in the Bank contract briefcase. And everybody was waiting to see this match, so guess what? You get it right away. I know uh, they do it, but I know they do it a lot, but I don't understand why they would put what was probably the biggest, if not like if at least the second biggest match on the card. First, you would think that they would want to let people get into their seats and whatnot before throwing something so sudden. I mean, I was going to do a little bit of something, you know, around the house before I, you know, I was going to kind of turn it on a little later on. But then I realized that the the ladder match was the first thing I was like, damn, I have to focus right off the bat. (laughs) Well, it's it's mainly for the people in the arena. You know, um, they have to book those shows for the crowd that are there and make sure that, you know, they're attentive and ready to go, right? You know, what But you're again, saying, you know, if you're late, if you're, you know, stuck in traffic right, but, or something. But that's, that's you your know. fault, right? You should be True. there before the bell rings. It's also to get people to not be out there buying stuff right now. That's You true. know, all that stuff. Be in the arena when the thing starts so that you're there and you can pick another time to, to go do all that. It's only that too. I mean, they just sat through the snore fest that was the pre-show of opening match. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta grab them while you still can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like that snore fest. <laughs> I wish they would just like you know start giving out complimentary pillows during the free show. <laughs> um, uh, 
But anyway, I mean, it, this was great. Uh, a great way to start the show. Of course, it's the title of the show, so why not hit it off with the, the, the first match, which is the Money in the Bank match. And, uh, you know, very much of what we expected, I think, personally. Uh, a, a pretty much a generic, normal Money in the Bank match. I, I was impressed, but not overly impressed. I, I think my favorite things for me personally uh, had to be the hat trick of RKO's from Randy Orton. That was <laughs> one of the big things. I love the hat trick. I wish they would have screamed hat trick instead of <laughs> something else. Um, and then uh, th- there was another few things in there that were kind of sprinkled in that I enjoyed. But I want to know what you guys th- thought about this whole thing. So, Brandon, uh, after you know getting the surprise that, oh, crud, i got to sit down and actually watch this match, what was your favorite things what about did, what it? What did you want them to say, triple devil, so that they can tell everybody there's a basketball game going on right now? <laughs> hey, I, you know what? I, I th- someone had mentioned a few sports things in there somewhere. Like they kept talking about instant replay later in the show. So, hey, they're throwing in those you know ESPN references. Uh, but, you know, once again, we have you know a surprise here too. Sheamus winning the Money in the Bank contract. Uh, so, Brandon, what was your thoughts about the match and about Sheamus being the, the guy the surprise well, winner? For, first off, Sheamus winning it, I don't think anyone predicted that happening. I mean, I know none of us did here. Uh, I think all of you guys had Roman Reigns winning, and I was on a toss-up between Reigns and Kane. But, uh, yeah, it was definitely a shocker. Uh, in terms of the match, it just by itself, uh, a few moments I liked. I loved the, the triple RKO, like you mentioned. I liked the RKO that he did uh, on Neville off of the off of the uh, ladder. And before that, Neville hopping over. I, I, I'm not sure who it was over. There was someone right at the... At the uh, ropes and he hopped over him and onto the top of the ladder which that was a really cool trick he did there um and then i kofi kingston had one or two nice moments in the match but i mean the the big shocker moment of the match well besides sheamus winning was uh Roman Reigns being all by himself about to grab the title and then Bray Wyatt popping out of nowhere and stopping him, which I don't understand what they're going to do with that. I don't see the rivalry there. I don't see the reasoning for why Bray Wyatt is attacking Roman Reigns. But we'll probably find well, out tomorrow night. They have a lot of history together from back in the Shield days and all that. I mean, Roman did that's, have his first ever singles true. match with... Uh, with um, my family, Wyatt. yeah, that's yeah. true. But I mean, that would make more sense if it were, you know, okay, we're gonna set up a three-on-three Shield versus Wyatt family type of matchup, you know. Um, but we'll we'll see where that goes. Um, but yeah, the the fact that Sheamus won was a huge shock, and um, yeah, I. I like the fact that they're giving Sheamus a push. I mean, you definitely saw when he had his heel turn and everything. You had a feeling that they were going to give him him a push. Um, but I didn't think it was going to happen this quickly. And I thought he was... I thought Sheamus was very similar to uh, Wade Barrett, where he was getting a bit of a push, but wasn't really getting that main event push. But I guess I was wrong, and... Uh, I like I like it. I like seeing Sheamus in the main events and getting the title, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how they handle that, especially with uh, him being a heel and Seth Rollins having the title, and you know how that's going to work out. Uh, that's true. Uh, I, at times I thought this match was fairly cookie cutter. At other times I thought it was fairly exciting. Uh, I. I I enjoyed Bray Wyatt's interference. For one, it was unexpected, which I thought was very cool. Two, I think it's it was the natural feud I think we were all expecting before um, they had Wyatt go after Ryback for seemingly no reason to. So it's it, it it's not like Bray needs a solid, sane reason to feud with anybody. I mean, well, the, the, the guy is nuts. So he can feud with anybody at the drop of a hat, and it's fine. Uh, when we get to Sheamus winning, I think... This was meant for Roman Reigns for a long time, but I think with Daniel Bryan's injury, we're still fi- we're still feeling the effects on booking. 
because there's almost absolutely zero reason why I think Seamus should have had the briefcase. And then not that I'm complaining because I love Seamus, but it just it doesn't feel like he was in that position ever, and especially with the booking in the last couple months since the Debray injury. So yeah, I I don't I don't have a problem with it, but it just doesn't feel right, you know. Oh, I, I I completely agree with that. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I was so shocked at Sheamus was that he's not really involved with any of the, you know, big title match type of setups. You know, he's, he's not a part of the authority. He's not completely against the authority. You know, he's kind of his own man, and he's coming back with this new persona, which, I mean, that gives him an advantage and a little bit of a push, but, you know, you didn't really... You saw him more of as, like, an upper mid-carder type right now, at least I thought. It's, it, this reeks of... Uh, WWE found out that everybody was picking Roman Reigns, so let's pick somebody different just to screw with the people betting and all that stuff. That's mm-hmm. exactly what this reeks of, mm-hmm. um, because there's no, I mean, let's be honest, there's been many times where WWE just says, alright, this guy's Money in the Bank winner, we'll figure out the booking later. Most of the time, though, that booking also involves them losing all the time, and Sheamus has been kind of whatever, you know, this also is the reason why, you know, Bray kind of comes in because this is what WWE loves to do with Bray. Bray's doing nothing. Oh, he's just randomly going to go attack Roman Reigns now. And then he'll just randomly blab in, in promos so that you can kind of look like it makes sense. <laughs> now, these two have history, like I said, so hopefully that will come into play at some point. Knowing WWE and knowing how they are, that they don't care that we remember last week. <laughs> Probably not, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, you're completely right, and that's why I was kind of chuckling, Sean, because that's exactly what I thought about, too, was the fact that, okay, Vince saw everybody was picking Roman Reigns, so here's your swerve, Internet. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I just kind of felt like it's weird. Um, and it, my first thought, too, is, you know, with Sheamus winning the Money in the Bank contract, we go one of two ways here. Uh, first way is he cashes it in in a dumb way and there's no way he wins and so it's wasted uh second way is they usually legitimately uh brock lesnar is champion at the time and you have a fight between those two but don't know how good that's going to be either um because well, just... and that also implies especially now in the way wwe is is that one of those two will have a face turn mm-hmm. so and, and brock lesnar uh most likely will be most. that yeah, uh, and I think he's already there, uh, technically. Um, just the way he, they kind of... He's pretty much a tweener right now. I don't really see him as much of anything. I mean, some people like him, some people don't. He's mm-hmm. a bit of an arrogant, cocky guy, so, you know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's it, very true. He is kind of the tweener, you're right. Um, I just know that he gets the loudest pop whenever he's in town, so... Um, that pretty much gets you to that face roll, uh, pretty cl- closely at least. Yeah. Um, so anyway, well, you know, I, I don't think the, like I said, this is a bad match at all. Uh, Paul hit on the head, cookie cutter, very, very cookie cutter. The only thing I think we missed here and correct me guys, maybe I missed it. Um, but no Kofi Kingston, big moves here. Uh, we had the new day show up in this match. Like a lot of people did expect that was kind of predicted as well. Uh, but no other big moves by Kofi Kingston, you know, no I chairs. Thought that there, I thought that there was one, but I don't, I mean, the the one big move that pops into my head was the Neville one that I mentioned. But I thought that there was one that Kofi Kingston did, but I forget it right uh, now. I mean, you had the zigzag to Seamus from the top of the ladder, um, and then the Neville one, and really there wasn't a whole lot other than the RKO's, so, mm-hmm. I mean... Yeah, so I think it's just interesting. Uh, but we do know that Kofi Kingston isn't a new role, so it doesn't matter if we miss that. So I mean, uh-huh. it, it, they did it, yeah, they did do a nice job of having the whole uh, making us think maybe Kofi would win for a second, because you know I'm sure that people kind of knew there was that theory of the Brock match meant something, which I don't know why people thought that the Brock match was meant to mean something. Um, 
I don't know why that rumor started at all, but it is what it is. Um, I did, you know, if there's uh, one thing I don't mind Roman stealing from Undertaker is the whole dive to the outside because he does it really well and it shows his athleticism and whatever. Oh yeah, that that was one yeah. moment that I that I liked as well was Roman Reigns going out and diving and destroying everyone all in one fell swoop. Yeah. I mean, mm. he makes it look cool when he does it. So yes. It's totally fine. Very true. He doesn't do the front flip, though. That's better. <laughs> I don't want him to die. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping him above ground's good. So. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's move on, guys. Uh, you know, we can talk more about the, you know, this discussion probably at the end, but we're going to go on with the rest of this card. And let's go on to the Divas Championship match between Nikki Bella and Paige. And in this match, uh, you I, I guess you don't get a whole lot here, but uh, what we do know is that twin magic does happen. Bree's actually involved in the match. Uh, Paige wins over Bree, but the issue is it's Bree. The referee finds out. Of course, the referee's an idiot anyway. Uh, Nikki comes in, rack attack, and one, two, three. She retains the belt. So, I mean, this is ridiculous um, for me personally. Uh, uh, so, on, I don't really want to talk about it. It's, on, it's what? Th- this was the honor Dusty Rhodes moment. Dusty finish at the end. It's <laughs> That's what Very this was. True. They they, yeah. they should they should have changed the card to have all dusty finishes throughout the whole card. I think I would have turned it off after like the second one. Yeah, I mean, good, point. good point. I think even Dusty would have been like, hey, been this, like this no, is not that's... the NWA. Like, let's just you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I attribute whatever. I don't. I just to me still uh, the whole. It, they're not twins anymore, so twin magic doesn't work. Okay, I'll give them this. You know, the whole Brie throwing out the the stuff out of her bra was was funny because they actually seemed like they tried this time, which I appreciate. Uh, Christopher uh, made the joke in the in the thread that he was like, "God, it almost seemed like Brie had to do everything but show her vajay to make it seem like you know she was Nikki. Like it just that's why it doesn't work, you know. But it's it was funny. She tried. She really went for it, you know. So. Um, and, and I'll give him this. This was a much better match than I think anybody else was expecting going in here. Um, they gave him time, and they went out there and, and had a good match. Um, you know this thing was going to continue anyway, because who the hell else is in this division? You know. Mm-hmm. Paul, I mean, what were you thinking on this? I'm just really curious on, on your thoughts, because I, I know, you know we've had some of this referee issues uh, recently, uh, what do you think about this match, though? I, I appreciated the finish because at least they, yeah, like Sean said, they tried to make it seem like it was much more effort put into Brie trying to look like Nikki. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not to mention just Brie pulling out and then redoing it so everybody else in the crowd could see again that it's Brie. Uh, I, th- I found funny, too. The match... I think it was, was good at times. There's some other times where it's sort of uh, either lulled or a blown spot sort of took me out of it. But I think it was still a fine match and a fine effort and a good sign, hopefully, that they're trying to put something into this Divas division. Because those types of finishes, uh, while silly at times, I do make people care. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Plus, I mean, we know these two have good chemistry. They've had good matches before, so I'm glad that they got to continue that here, you know. Mm. Yeah, uh, you know, and the one thing Brandon that made me sad about this was the fact that uh, Paige did mention Dusty. This one's for you, Dusty, uh, and she didn't get a chance to win. That made me kind of sad. She did win technically. She just well, yeah. didn't walk away with the get title. The win- you know? Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't matter to me. Uh, mm-hmm. W the W is what matters. Um, but that was a technically not a W. I don't know. It's sad. Just sad, sad, sad. I'm sorry. I just, I just wanted it to work out the other way. Uh, so anyway, well, there you go with the Divas match. Um, we're going to move on from there and talk about the Intercontinental Championship match with Ryback as his as the champion, and then you got the Big Show, which everybody either uh, loves or you really wish he was retired. It just depends on your thought process on that whole thing. But here we go, guys. A match that once again, I mean. We kind of got the spoiler uh, on Raw, so 
you know, no big finish here for that because of what they did with The Miz. The Miz did show up before the match, and, of course, he was at ringside. He got involved, uh, and he stopped Big Show, and, of course, there you go. It's it's one of those issues where um, you just don't know what to say. I mean, why have a match like this on a pay-per-view if you don't get it finished? But, well, you know. I, I think it's pretty much – I would think, and, I mean, this is the only logical – thing that they're doing is they're leading up to a triple threat between those three. Oh. That's the only thing I can think of. I mean, th- why is Miz even out there to begin with? Um, you know, mm-hmm. there there were some moments that, um, I mean, we all agreed that we thought that Ryback was going to win this since... There was no way they were going to stop his momentum, and Big Show had nothing to gain from it. But there were some moments where I was thinking, you know, Big Show was starting to get some momentum, and I was like, are they really going to allow Big Show to win this and, you know, and actually destroy Ryback's momentum? And then, you know, Miz comes in and, and interferes and whatnot. But, I mean, it... Again, as I said, I think the only thing that I can see coming out of this is Miz putting his hat in the ring for an Intercontinental title shot and them playing a triple threat match or whatever. I, I don't know. I, I apologize for my groan, Brandon. It's just a fact of the matter. We've seen Miz with the Intercontinental Championship. Oh, I agree. I don't like it either, but... I, 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 yeah. It is what it is, and you're correct. It very well could be that triple threat, you know, and, you know, Miz getting involved, calling, causing disqualification, you know, it's, you know, Ryback still walks away with the belt, you know, even though he doesn't get a chance to win the match. And I really felt like at the beginning there, Big Show was going to dominate, but in the end, Ryback was going to make the comeback. And, you know, not getting the match, I guess it's not too bad because I'm not a huge Big Show guy right now, and I'm really looking forward to watching a lot of his stuff, but... Uh, on the other hand, it works for the future, I guess. So, uh, what did you guys think, Paul? Uh, this was really the only part of the show that I think I absolutely hated. Uh, it's sort of almost a waste of five minutes to me because if you're just gonna have the Miz jump in and ruin it, when this match really should be about establishing Ryback as he's your big, you know, he's your other face champion outside of uh, Seth at the top and John Cena, who is sort of in a whole other league of his own. Um, I think if you're trying to establish Ryback, I think this did more harm than good, almost. Because nobody cares about The Miz, nobody cares about Big Show, but you could at least make Ryback look good out of all this. And they, they kind of pissed all over that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. They would ha- they were having a decent match, actually. Until yeah. Until they had Miz get involved, and it was like, okay, well, that well, just made just me feel like I was watching Raw match. instead. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that that's my problem is that I, I get that they know they have big matches that are going to make people forget about this kind of stuff and and whatever. And you already had the Dusty finish before. Don't do this back to back. It's stupid. Like you're you're kind of insulting your audience that's watching this. And if they you want to make it if you wanted them to care about Ryback at all, you didn't help at all by doing this like. You can do the triple threat without having to have Miz interrupt the match and get jealous and whatever the hell it was. He got mad because he kept getting pushed around by the two other guys. and It's dumb. It, it, it's wasting our time watching it. Why? Just, it is, it, it's, don't even have the match then. Mm-hmm. Just don't have the match then because I feel like I could have spent my five minutes making me a sandwich for <laughs> watching this. Like, just yeah. seriously, it's. And, and like Paul said, no one cares about The Miz. Stop forcing him into these feuds that don't need to be there. Just find him something else to do. Put him on commentary on well, one of it, these shows. Like His just, whole persona, too, is just so stupid. Like, And the whole Miz Dow thing and everything. No one cares about The Miz. No one cares about, you know, him acting like an actor in wrestling no one care no one wants to see that so i i completely agree with you like if anything do you know 
have him retire from actually being in wrestling, but have him do Miz TV or whatnot. Let him do something. Have him have a talk show or be put him on commentary or something. But get him out of the ring. Yeah. I, I don't think he's that bad of a wrestler. It's just... I wish they would find something for him that yeah. feels like he needs to be there instead of, well... We feel like because Miz is in a movie that's probably not going to show up till December, we need to have him involved in something. Mm. And and uh, I, mean, I, I totally agree with you, Sean. And, and do, do, we ha- do we not? Is it like where we don't have a we have a mid card here? Like, is there not any other better? Opponents for Ryback than Big There's Show. There's plenty of guys. I mean, pretty yes. much everyone. Pretty much everyone, besides well, maybe not everyone, but half of that Money in the Bank match you could put into the Intercontinental Title Challenge. Yeah, sorry, mm-hmm. Gary. Oh no, no, no! I'm, 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 I, I, you said exactly what I wanted to say, Sean. Exactly. Uh, first thing is the Miz is not a bad wrestler. Uh, he's not the best wrestler that they have in the company, but he's not the worst. And I just, I wish they could use him better. <coughs> and instead of being a little annoying little weasel or whatever you want to call him and doing these kind of things, I wish they would just use him in the correct way. Let him do other things. I get you got to have a guy like this. That's fine. But, you know, at least make him halfway decent. I, it just bothers me that this guy was a champion at one time. Uh, you know, there would be world heavyweight champion. And here we are uh, with him doing these kind of things. I, I just think he's a little bit above it. Maybe not the fan favorite. I'm probably more of a fan than I think a lot of people are of The Miz. Uh, and the thing you said about Ryback, that's exactly right, Sean. You want him to look strong. You want him to get that opportunity to hold that title up and just sh- showcase it. And he can't showcase it when he's having to battle guys like Big Show and The Miz. They need a better uh, person for him to feed with. They need to find someone. I mean, I, I don't really want to do that, but Bray Wyatt? I mean, at least he's someone that's solid. It's someone that you can believe it would be a big feud, um, you know, and actually well, have him. happen, obviously, since Wyatt I know Bray Wyatt won, but I'm saying you could even have a comeback. And, hey, Ryback may get his win back or maybe, well, you know. We, well, exactly. Bray Wyatt was a natural feud because he won. So mm-hmm. he should have gotten the first crack at the, fir- at the IC title, whatever. Yeah. That, oh, I that's... agree. But what I'm saying is that uh, Ra- uh, Bra- Bray Wyatt, Obviously, now they're doing something with him with Roman Reigns. So, mm-hmm. right, so. but at the time yeah. we didn't, you know, at yeah. the, before they started this crap with Big Show, which, which let okay, you know, for one, I should say that give Paul credit for whatever you were giving me credit for. Um, secondly, uh, I think the the bigger deal here is that Big Show was fine as your first opponent. Whatever, we don't like it. But you could have transitioned from Big Show to someone else to, uh, to then then you have Bray Wyatt or then you have whoever it is that you want to to be in this this mid card or or whatever. I'm just saying that you know this is where uh, you have three tag team champions. If you're gonna have Kofi be in the Money in the Bank, why can't Big E go for the have one crack at the IC title or something. Just, I don't know. There, there's, there's a lots of possibilities there, um, and they chose to go with the poorest one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got your, you know, I, I, I agree with that. And Big E's another guy um, that we could definitely say has showcased he can be a champion. He was the NXT champion at one time. I think that's forgotten IC a lot of times. IC champion too. IC yeah, champion. He was, he was former IC champion. champion. So the guys held more than one belt. You know, he's done this. He's been there. And, and uh, there's plenty of other guys we could talk about and run into the whole list. But there's one thing I will have to definitely give Paul credit for, and that's getting me on the ride track of the Ryback. You know, it wasn't long ago when we were talking about Ryback, and I was kind of disgusted, didn't want to talk about him. But I kind of saw where Paul was coming from. Eventually, my eyes were opened, and, and I'm getting more on that Ryback train. So um, definitely have to do that. Uh, you know, and I mean, I don't know about you guys. But if they're going to continue with the IC belt like this, uh, it's going to be kind of sad to see that U.S. belt be the 
belt that's honestly higher on the food chain uh, because right now the U.S. belt is shining as beautiful as ever. Uh, John Cena is holding it. He's using it in the correct way. And, of course, he gets a chance to face off against Kevin Owens, the rematch. Uh, and, of course, Kevin Owens is the NXT champion. So this is a champion versus champion match. And I don't know about you guys, but I, I, I did have high expectations for this because of the first match we saw with these two guys. I really thought the Elimination Chamber match was great. We all talked about how that was the match of the night at the Elimination Chamber. I want to know what you guys think about this. I was overly thrilled with it. I enjoyed it. I, I, I saw more positives than anything out of this match. Uh, we do eventually get John Cena going over here. That's totally cool with me. I know it's 50-50 booking. Uh, Paul hit it on the head. 50-50 booking. He predicted that correct. I was really honestly thinking that this was going to be a DQ match. I really felt like that they weren't going to let Owens get pinned. That's that, and Paul hit it. You you got it right on the head there, Paul. So watching this match, what was your thought process after it all was over? Uh, yeah, I think you nailed it, uh, too. Uh as good as their match was at Elimination Chamber, I think this blew it out of the water. Uh, and, and I'll say the same for another rematch that we got later on in the evening, too. But th- this was incredible. Uh, and I thought for the longest time during this match, the way they were battling back and forth, I really thought they were going to have this go to like a time limit, no finish or something like that. Hmm. I think that would have worked very, very well here, too. Uh, but instead, we get the WWE special... A 50-50 booking, and we have Kevin Owens immediately getting his heat back after Cena makes the show of respect, which I think works here, but I don't know if that's still the correct option. Um, but either yeah, way, I the match, I the didn't match like that wonderful. personally, but continue. No, I was, that, that was just finishing my thoughts. Oh. Yeah, the, the match is terrific. Yeah, I mean, I love the match. I also uh, said that I also predicted the 50-50 booking. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was a great match. The one thing I liked about it, and I think, and it was because of the fact that he won at Elimination Chamber, was this time when I was watching it, whereas last time I was thinking, oh, Cena's going to make a comeback at some point, and I was shocked that he didn't. This time, when they were battling back and forth, I really thought that Owens had a chance and I really thought that you know Cena was on the ropes and the one thing that I that was an interesting concept and it'll be interesting to see if they continue this especially with the end of it with uh with how Kevin Owens handled Cena's you know raising of his hand and everything Cena was getting not only frustrated but he was like he was doing something that you would never think you'd see from John Cena and that is arguing with the ref and trying to you know get get early calls and whatnot and he was trying it, it seemed like he was trying to use his stature and his status as a way of saying hey you should be giving me these calls kind of a, like a LeBron James type of thing they're going where he was saying that that should have been a three count that you know do you know who I'm who I am type of thing um and it it was really it was it was kind of fun seeing John Cena get so flustered and so rattled and despite the fact that Cena won because of that Kevin Owens does still keep the level that he's on, I feel. And what I would love to see is them trade back and forth, back and forth until maybe, maybe until SummerSlam and then finish it there. But I would say go even further. Wait until like October and have a good old school Hell in a Cell match that will finally definitively finish it. And have them go all out in the cell and, you know, have them definitively end the feud there. <clears throat> Your idea would have worked many years ago when we didn't have to have the Hell in a Cell in October. Um, I just don't think it works now. W will eventually screw the pooch on the feud if it goes that long. True. So, uh, they can't. Uh, 
that long to say. But I, right. I, uh, I will say it, it. I, I do kind of agree with you, but I think the way to end it would be having a a definitive match of a extreme variety. Have an I quit match. Have you know some sort of match that really, you know, determines who's the better man. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I I totally get what you're saying. Um, yeah, like I said, you're right on the head as far as, you know, have if they were to continue this past battleground or whatever, having something a stipulation that makes it definitive is good for it. Um, I'm just glad that you know Cena didn't use his stature to pull LeBron James and, and be you know, flashing people. But you know, I'm just saying that at the end of the day. I'm I'm upset because really I don't know about this whole just th- this is just so like they were doing so well with this feud and then I guess we'll see where where we go from here it just it bothers me that at the end of the day WWE couldn't think outside the box yeah. um you know they could have uh told a nice story with Owens winning again of Cena being completely broken and um, you know, of of him really being a character of himself and, you know, Kevin Owens getting to put in his face all this stuff that he says is hollow and now Cena really needs to try to prove that and whatever, but now it kind of seems like, okay, well, we're going to have this obligatory third match because we have to because we got to have a rubber match and whatever, but... I, and, I will... Uh, the I match will say... was awesome, though. The match yeah. was awesome. Uh... Like Paul said, totally blew the first one out of the water. Uh, the kicking out of two AAs, you know, the um, kicking out of Owen stuff, just really well done. The crowd was eating it up, and great stuff from the two. The players. the one the one thing I really liked in the match was, and it was really a you know attack on Cena, and you know saying screw you to Cena was uh, Owens using Cena's moves against him. And that was something fun that I liked seeing. But the one thing that I was thinking about during the match, and the one reason why, while yes, it's, you know, it's so cliche and it's used so much, the one thing that I wouldn't like about Owens continuing to win against Cena is that, it puts the pedestal a little too high for Owens because then whenever he lo- if if he continues if if he wins against Cena another time you know three in a row then everyone expects him to go on this giant undefeated streak and you know go for the title and everything automatically and if he, and as soon as he loses to someone who is perceived as lower in prestige than John Cena, which is pretty much everyone on the roster now, that destroys the whole uh, that whole progression, that that whole build up that he has. It completely destroys all of his momentum. Uh, fair enough. Still think if you do it with the right person, that's not necessarily true, but. Yeah. It's tough. Who who would you have that would live up to the? Well, well you, you have a, you can. Whenever Zayn comes up to the roster, you can continue their feud up on the main roster. You can. Uh, it would have to be somebody new, obviously. I don't think it could be someone that's been on the roster because everybody, in a sense, aside from Brock Lesnar, is sort of damaged goods in one way or another. Yeah. So. I think You're you can make the argument for Dean after this evening too. Yeah, you can make the argument for that's Dean. True. Um that's that's gonna be interesting where he goes if this continues with Rollins or, or whatnot. But yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't throw Bo Dallas's name in that hat. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I just I believe that. in him <laughs> doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, you know, and something else I found pretty interesting about this match too was, you know, uh, you know, just the way that Kevin Owens opened up that can of moves. Uh, he just had his move set expand. He got John more. Cena to open up can of moves. Too. Mm-hmm. He did. He really did. And I just, I, just looking at Owens in particular, though, that the super kick uh, was a kind of a surprise for me. Uh, and he also used a version of the code breaker, if you want to say it. Uh, that was yeah. kind of cool, uh, and then I believe he used another move. It looked all like he almost he tried to do that um, mm-hmm. package neck breaker on Cena, but I think he panicked at the last minute that Cena wouldn't know what he's doing or didn't get the message, and he just kind of slammed him instead. One of um, a couple yeah. of moves that looked like he was about to drop him on his head, much like the yeah. uh, the um, the momentum tilt the world sort of. Uh, uh, wheelbarrow style sunset flip that he got Cena to do before he almost fell on yeah. him. And <laughs> Cena didn't catch the, uh, yeah, that's where it was because like Cena couldn't get all the way over for the crucifix part. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, but man, th- I just love the fact that these two just keep bringing stuff out. You know, Cena, you know, took a page out of Patron's book with the reverse suplex and he, you know, he pulled out his horrible Hurricane Rana, but he did it nonetheless, you know, so. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. It was great. I mean, it really was, and, and you guys summed it up. I mean, it was just a fun match to watch. It was a very well done, and um, I, I think, once again, these guys have proven that they're in, and they're in it for um, to, to really, you know, give the best match they can. I know Kevin Owens is doing the best he can to get the crowd behind him, to get, uh, you know, all the heat he can uh, with that crowd as well. So I love it. And John Cena is, of course, once again, proving that he is one of the top talents and the fact that he is willing to give all he can to help these younger guys. I love it. I love it. You know, in the past, I would have never said about John Cena, but, you know, this year he's gone way far and beyond what I ever thought he would do. So you got to give him all the credit in the world. Uh, heck, I might be voting for this guy in January for Superstar of the Year uh, if he keeps this kind of stuff up with these young talents, for me personally. Uh, and one other thing, though, did you guys notice that the, the production crew kept missing? They would do replays while other big moves were happening. I, I remember the Kevin Owens drop kick was kind of missed in a way because they were showing a replay. Then, of course, the pop-up power bomb. They were doing a replay during that as well. I thought that was hilarious. They almost had to do back-to-back replays. That's yeah, that was... WWE, you know. Mm-hmm. Let's throw that replay out there till we can't do it enough. You know? Yeah, they're trying to be ESPN, and they're doing their well the best. <laughs> well, but I mean that shows how crazy and how fast-paced this match was going. With that, you know. It was one big move after another, and you know the replays just couldn't keep up. You didn't have time to show a big move because another big move was coming right after. Mm-hmm. That's correct. You're you're right. So, uh, you know, however it may be, it was a lot of fun to watch. And no matter if you had to watch the replay to see the move, it was great. So. Uh, well, guys, there you go. Once again, uh, you know, we do have a great match out of Kevin Owens and John Cena, but we are moving on to the tag team titles. And that is, of course, with the New Day facing off against the primetime players. And before this even starts, of course, we're going to have Biggie Langston and Xavier Woods out there talking about the fact that, oh, Kofi Kingston was wrong. But you know what? He needs the crowd support. He needs to do the claps. That way that they can be positive claps and help him heal from his sad defeat in the Money in the Bank uh, ladder match. So looking at that, I mean, I think it was funny. Uh, Not too bad. These guys always do kind of a fun job. And I love the fact that Xavier Woods almost got negative, but Big E stopped him. So it was fun. Then we get, of course, the primetime players coming out and we start this match. And I thought it was a pretty good match. Um... It way, way surprised me, the ending. I really did not expect primetime players to walk off with the tag titles. Uh, but overall, I think they did a pretty good job. Darren Young did a wonderful job in this match. I thought he did great. And, of course, uh, it was kind of fun to see Titus O'Neil um, 
shine like he did in the end of this match. So, what did you guys think about this overall, Brandon? Were you were you surprised by the fact that the prime well, time players won? I think we were all shocked. This was the other match that none of us got right on Thursday. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this was definitely a shocker. Um, nothing in the match itself that was too over the top crazy, but. The the finish overall definitely was very crazy, and it'll be very interesting to see how this continues. And I, I'm assuming, considering the fact that the primetime players won, which no one expected, that this is going to call, this is going to begin a very long feud between the New Day and the primetime players, which. I like because, I mean, right now these two teams are the only two that I can really see as serious contenders for the titles. Yeah. Uh, first things first, I want to echo your sentiments about the promos, Gary. This, the promos for the New Day today were terrific. Uh, very funny, very entertaining, and just, I think, captures the characters perfectly uh, and, and where they're heading. Uh, the, the decision to put the belt on the primetime players is one I'm behind mostly because I like them. Uh, otherwise, um, I think it does show that the WWE is at least trying to grow their tag team division. And I think this is a great way to go about it. Um, primetime players are terrific faces. The match is pretty much, if you've seen any rock and roll express tag team match ever, this is the blueprint for a rock and roll express tag team match, uh, with Darren Young playing, uh, Ricky Morton. And Titus O'Neil playing. Uh, <laughs> you know, my my brain is failing me right now, but you, you get the picture. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Titus O'Neil comes in looking beast mode. It, it, it's great. Uh, I, I'm fine with this. I wish it was a little longer, personally, but we're we're about to get to a match that might be the longest match in WWE in a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Um, was the first guy's name Robert and I'm I'm, just, I'm blanking too I don't know why I can't think okay, we gotta look this up name. I can't believe it either right this is embarrassing it's, it's really <laughs> embarrassing because normally I'm like if it's not Ricky oh, Mort Robert me. Gibson yeah there you I, go. I, oh. like, fuck, I know the first one's <laughs> name Robert <laughs> it's like <laughs> see Sean you get half credit <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh yeah so you know, um, I'll admit that kind of part of this, I was already sort of, my attention was sort of drawing to the E3 thing I had to do tonight. So this is the kind of, the one match that I kind of was going back and forth. I didn't get to see a lot of it. Um, I was totally shocked by the primetime players winning. Uh, I thought New Day would keep it until WWE felt that they were sufficiently over that they could give it to another team. But I'm really um, excited that the primetime players got the first reign. Um, I'm glad that means that they're probably going to stick around for a little bit. Because I kind of figured maybe they're just going to hold the belts for the Usos to come back or something like that. You know, um, So, great on WWE. Hopefully this, this means something here and not just, oh, we're going to let them have it for this month that we have to prepare for now. And then New Day gets it back at Battleground or, or even on a Raw or something. Much worse. Yeah. I mean, the the one thing about it, and I mean, you saw how they were by themselves. I think this is a sign that the primetime players will probably stay a tag team for a good while. And that, you know, that is where they belong. Because, let's face it, Darren Young and Tyus O'Neill by themselves didn't really do anything. And now they're together again and they got a big... You know, they've gotten a lot of heat by the fans uh, lately, and, you know, they've definitely been much more successful together than they ever were by themselves. To be fair, I think that we gave them both the short and the stick. Well, that's true. When you have a big guy like Titus vomiting everywhere, I <laughs> immediately don't care about anything he does. So. Um, it reminds me of Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, with <laughs> Papa Shango. Um, <laughs> Papa Shango. The, uh, yeah, I mean, and Darren Young, I think the WWE just kind of didn't know how to toe the line between let's push Darren Young without doing the gay thing, and then once they couldn't figure that out, I think they just kind of get, or when he got hurt too, which didn't yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I, I'm thrilled, and you guys heard me just this last Thursday talk about the fact that this is my hope and wish and dream that the Prime Town players will win the belts, and they did, and I am super <laughs> thrilled. I really am. You know, I've always wanted these guys to be able to celebrate those millions of dollars, and now with the tag team titles around their waist, they have gold. They have their technical millions of dollars, right? Um, they'll be making more money, of course. You know, all those great things with those belts. And so this is going to be fun. These guys are already fun in the first place, but this is going to be really interesting to see how these guys carry the belts and how they interact with everybody. I'm sure there's going to be some fra- uh, pretty crazy comedy bits and when we get to Raw and everything like that. So I'm excited about that. And something else I'm excited about about this tag team uh, called the New Day is the fact that now that you have Kofi Kingston with a loss, now that you have Xavier Woods and Big E losing the tag titles, what is their attitude eventually going to get to be? I think it's going to get pretty sour pretty fast, and I could see not a complete gimmick change, but I could see a little bit more angry team. And if there is a gimmick change, I hope it leads into a dominating uh, force, if you want to get my drift there. A new a new nation of sorts. So, um, Anyway. Hopefully there will be something We're like that. We're still going on this train? I want it to so bad. I'm still going to stay on it just like I'm going to I'll stay say on that it. we already saw Xavier Woods almost fall for it mm-hmm. um, during that promo. So that, that's, that's the only reason I even said that, Sean, because of that just almost right there. And Big E had to be the stop. What if Big E doesn't stop it? What happens next? So, uh, Very great stuff. Uh, just excited about this whole situation. I think both tag teams were still solid. I still am behind New Day and whatever they're going to do. And, of course, stoked about the primetime players. Let's move on to the longest match of the night. And, man, one of the longest matches in a while. Uh, We get the big World Heavyweight Championship match. And that is with Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. And, boy, did these guys put the work in. I was thrilled about this match. I was really curious to see how this was going to end up. In my personal opinion, I thought in the end, Maybe Seth Rollins recruits some other help. That's why they've portrayed him. The guy that needs help to win matches, right? No. Here we are. Seth Rollins by himself. Take it on Dean Ambrose. Man, they took each other to the woodshed. But in the end, Seth Rollins found a way to win the match. Uh, And there you go. I mean, we get a great one. What did you guys think after watching this? Were you thrilled? Were you? How how did you feel? Brandon? Um, I guess I'll start. Yeah, I mean, it was a great match. Um, it, I completely agree with you guys. It was a very long match when it first started. I, I, I think it started around like you know ten fifteen something like that, ten twenty, and I was like, damn, is it really gonna go this long? And it did. And they had some great moments. I mean, they. These two guys, obviously Ambrose, you know his history and everything, and and Seth Rollins to a lesser extent as well, but you knew going into this match, if they did it correctly, they could have one of those great, very brutal, very, you know, effective, very awesome high spots, everything type of match, and, and that's exactly what happened you know the set uh Seth Rollins getting thrown onto the the ladder and it bending under his weight was a great spot and the the finish was was very was a really good finish uh you know it keep it, it allows Seth Rollins to keep the title but Dean Ambrose is this close he's so close to getting the title he has his hands on it as they come down and just barely loses it. And so this definitely can continue the feud for as long as they want it to. And, I mean, this is another one that I hope they just keep on building and building and building. Uh, I don't know how much more steam this might have now, personally. I- I'm okay with it continuing. I love Dean Ambrose. I love Seth Rollins. I love this match. I think this might be my new favorite ladder match for this decade so far. Mm. Um, j- j- these guys took everything they did last uh, two weeks ago in the Elimination Chamber and turned it up to 12. 
Not even 11. They turned it up to 12. Uh, the, the finish is great. There's some amazing, brutal spots. Like, the series of power bombs Dean Ambrose takes on the outside are just fucking brutal. Just brutal. Um, there, there's so much more. Like, the, the table not giving for the dirty deeds. Uh, and it looked like Dean bounced his head off the back of the monitor that it, they didn't take out. Um, uh, lo- there's, there's too many more. But these guys killed each other. They killed each other for 35 minutes. Um, which I think, uh, according to Patrick Ketza's research, who's been on the show before, wrestling and rap, all that good stuff, uh, longest match of this decade, for sure, uh, topping uh, Punk and uh, Cena from Money in the Bank a few years ago. So, I just, uh, you gotta tape your hat to these guys. They, they went out there in the main event for the belt and killed it, and I think maybe solidified their spots at the top of the mountain. Uh, you know what? What I loved about this is that it's simple yet effective and no one ever really does it is that Rollins worked the leg of Ambrose and why is that effective because you have to use that leg to climb the ladder if your leg is weakened you can no longer climb the ladder as you would if you're at full strength or whatever um you know that being said the fact that Ambrose is coming back and coming back and coming back and Rollins, that ending sequence where Rollins has to just keep powerbombing him into stuff, powerbombing him into the ladder with the chairs and all that stuff, and Ambrose still gets up anyway, and you have the really great finish, I thought, that um, just added to it, where Ambrose was that so close, and Rollins is able to wrestle it away from him, and um, Rollins looks wonderful because he proves that he can win by himself without the help of anyone. I thought at some point somebody would show up and, and, and get involved here, and they didn't. They did a great job. Uh, the guys went out there and had this long match, and I don't care. I mean, the, it might be a fault WWE, you know, the crowd kind of being out of it for the parts where he was working on the leg and all that kind of stuff, but... I thought for having to fill all that time, and sometimes having a lot of time can work against you, too. You know, people make a big deal about, oh, let's get this match. You know, we, we always say about giving the match time or whatever, but sometimes you give something way too much time, and you're going, oh, crap, how are we going to fill this? You know, it's just like, um, but to their credit, I thought it was really good if the crowd had been involved more and... Uh, maybe a few little picky things I think you could really call this into the echelon of awesome or something but from as far as ladder mats as I agree it's probably it might be the, the single best one as far as singles ladder matches go it was the one match that I think we've heard the word this is awesome or the phrase this is awesome a lot and even in matches but didn't deserve it this is one that definitely deserved it and this is the time the crowd got it right that was awesome and i love it give it to a former wrestler to bring up the work on a leg thing sean and i think that uh that's right on the cue of this is what makes this match even better because you have dean ambrose the favorite the guy that everybody's excited about being hampered not getting to do the things he wants to do because that leg is so injured at times and the struggle that he has to win and try to win and he can't do it just because of certain situations like that, the leg. I think this is a great match to to definitely showcase people how to work these lengthy matches. These guys put in the time. um, I don't know how much they prepared themselves for it, but it goes back to those old days, you know, those old Broadways that we used to see in the 80s. You know, those things with Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes, those kind of guys worked an hour, and it was fine, and they did a great job, and you were never bored watching those, and I was never bored watching this. you got to give both those guys credit. Like Paul said, these guys are definitely on that top echelon, and so very, very happy to see this. I think this is a great way to cap the show. You know, I thought to myself personally, is there going to be a match at the top or to at least get close to what Kevin Owens and John Cena did? And yeah. There you go. Uh, they, they proved it right there. And so 
Um, this made me very, very happy. I think this took the pay-per-view to another level. So, I mean, I think when we rate this thing, I think it's going to really help that because at first I was kind of wondering what I was going to do. Uh, so this is a definitely a big uh, cap off. So why don't we go ahead and do that, guys? Let's go ahead and rate this pay per view overall. Uh, what I would done, say sir? that mm-hmm. I really like the the ending with Rollins and the interview. Um, well, good on WWE first of all for allowing JoJo to have the little moment to interview Rollins here. They didn't just pull Renee Young out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, but the whole you know you could see Triple H's face a little bit with the just subtle. Ooh, I don't know if I like him calling himself the greatest champion of all time. That involves <laughs> saying he's greater than me. Mm. You know, it's Uh-oh. setting the setting the seeds. I think that for that that Triple H Rollins match that I think we're still going to get at SummerSlam. So, um, especially with that poster going around of Roman Reigns Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, that's already, um, you know, like I said, been making the rounds. So, you know. It, it's it, you need you need those big time matches, and I think they've been building to this, and it makes sense. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Sean, and um, that that was a big key. And I, I kept thinking since we've all talked about Brock Lesnar's coming back soon, I was waiting for Brock Lesnar to show up and do a stare down. Yeah. Oh, well, is he supposed to be? I think it's next week's Raw. Is not, it next week's? Okay. Not tomorrow. I just thought it was a surprise. Maybe they would have him at the Money in the Bank uh, to cap off whoever was going to be the champion. So, but, but I'm glad it didn't. Uh, you know, the way they ended it was just fine. Um, so, all right, Brandon, I want you to go ahead and give me your rating. What did you think this pay per view deserved? I I think this was a great pay per view. I'm I'm giving it a nine. It was. There weren't many low points. Every match was a good one. Um, yeah, there, I don't really see anything that I can say negative about it. Paul? Uh, I'm going to give it an eight and a half. I liked it more than the Elimination Chamber, which I believe I gave it an eight. Uh, Ryback, the Intercontinental title match is almost, you, you is, is unnecessary for what we got on the show. Uh, pre-show match wasn't great. Everything else was, I think, fine to match of the year candidate worthy, which I did. I, Kevin Owens, John Cena, and Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins have both bumped their old matches from Elimination Chamber off the list and then replaced them with these uh, on mine. So just, uh, I think it's a standout show as far as wrestling goes. I would agree as far as wrestling goes. Uh, um, tr- tremendous show. Um, I... I have a, I don't like the fact that in the Money in the Bank match you took out Reigns. Um, you didn't make it obvious who was going to win because nobody was thinking Sheamus, but I hate it when you take out the most obvious guy to try to... It, it was I thought it was silly. It, it took away from the match instead of adding to it. And that could have easily been done afterwards. Um, it, it's, it's whatever. Um... And and Ryback and Big Show was the only thing that was kind of the why is this here moment. Everything else um, was either done to honor someone or or was great, or you had some surprises. You know, we complain sometimes about how WWE just does things, and it's it, you can predict it a mile long. And you had a few of those here um, that were oh hey this person won wow. Um, so I'm gonna. I'm going to say an eight, uh, eight and a half, too. Um, and, yeah, I'll just, I'll just put it there. I can't really say otherwise. I, I just think that for it to be a nine, you can't have a match that was unnecessary and parts of booking that were just... Like, I, the, the Cena winning bothered me. Just, it just really bothered me. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I understand that. Fair. I, I, oh, man. This is one of those ones I wish I had remembered what I had given Elimination Chamber. I want to almost say I gave it an 8, um, like Brandon. I want to say it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 8.5. Um, 
I I was very very happy what we got with the two big matches that I thought needed to deliver delivered. Money in the Bank delivered for what it was worth, but it was so cookie cutter. It didn't do the uh, the you know the best. It didn't get me so excited, but it wasn't bad. So I, I think eight and a half is right around where I want to be. And the half actually comes from the primetime players winning the tag belts. So that's why I'm going to rank it that way. I was very, very thrilled that we you know we got a great main event, um, and of course, you know those tag titles moving on to my millions of dollars, boys. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but there you go, guys. That is our Money in the Bank review. We are so happy that we got a chance to do it. The show's not over though, everybody. We still have more to do. We were about to break down Ring of Honor's Best in the World 2015. Paul is going to lead I us do down want the car. We have a. Uh, mm-hmm. Much of a difference of opinion, and we have at least three or four people that that thought this was a bad show. Really, really? on our page. That's that's surprising. I want. I would be interested to hear what why they say it was a bad show. You should you should post that on the the page. Say who vote whoever voted low. Why why did you say it? And I'm, uh, surprised, I'm surprised. You know, Fonty gave it an eight, considering that the guy he can't stand won a match. You know, so mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Fonty, to his credit, can suck it up and appreciate Cena when it does and when it's warranted. Yeah. So well, I, I mean, I don't. I'm not a big Cena fan either, and but I can, I'll give him credit where credit is due. It, it was a good match, and there were so, there were plenty of moments that see, that diminished. Cena's superhuman persona plenty enough for me to say, okay, you got the win, but your your reputation got a bit of a hit in this one. And uh, just because they're usually always on, the, you know, uh, Patrick uh, Ketza gave it a 7, so did uh, Mr. Larry Zonka, and so did Glenn, who's usually on here with the... So, there you go. A um, little bit lower than what we said. But I, I, again, can totally see, like Larry said in his review, his the, having the three matches at the beginning that all have weird finishes kind of does take it out of the way. I mean, if, if let, Let's be honest. I think if Dusty hadn't passed away, I would have it probably been a little bit more down on the Divas match having that finish than, mm-hmm. than uh, you know, appreciating it for what it, what it was supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to get out of here. I'll talk to you guys on Thursday. And, uh, yeah, it was a good match all in all. Uh, or it was a good pay-per-view all in all. And it'll be in- it'll definitely be interesting to see how uh, how things progress tomorrow night. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much, Brennan. And uh, we appreciate you joining us, man. Yep. All right, guys. All right, that is Brennan Bisco being, and uh, of course, we love having him on, and we will be probably talking to him too in the near future. But uh, we are going to move on and talk some Ring of Honor Best in the World 2015. We're going to run down the card and give you our predictions. We'll be right back. All right. Uh, well, this, this show is headlined by what possibly might be my most anticipated match of this year so far. Uh, not saying something, but, uh, first match on the card that I have in front of me is Silas Young taking on Dalton Castle, um, which I believe doesn't, uh, it has a little something behind it because obviously Silas Young is, uh, the last real man in wrestling and Dalton Castle is what he is. So there's that immediate uh, <laughs> headbutting right there. <laughs> the the yin and the yang, if you yes. if, yep. if I will. <laughs> if you will. <laughs> you will, yeah. Uh, Who you guys got? Uh, you know uh, what? Go ahead, Paul. All right, Sean, go ahead. You first. Man, this was hard because, you know, Dalton Castle is a guy that's really liked uh, by the fans anyway. Um, and Silas Young is sort of in that same category. That's going to be interesting. Uh, I don't know. It depends. I don't think I. I don't think this is meant to be anything other than a one-off. I'm gonna say so. Silas Young. If it was, it was. If it was continuing to go thing, then definitely Dalton Castle would have to win here. But I'll just say Silas Young. 
Yeah. Um, you know, this is kind of difficult because of the fact that I, I think both these guys bring something to the table. Uh, Castle is a guy I, I'm very impressed with. Uh, I just I, I think he's got the charisma. He's a lot of fun to watch. He's got a great work ethic. Um, and of course, you know, Silas Young does his thing, and you, you got to respect it. You know, it's kind of kind of has that whole Jake the Snake thing going on in a way. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It's like Tom Selleck versus that guy who used to do the whole all the workout videos in the '80s and '90s. Richard Simmons. Richard Simmons. There you go. Um, I would love to see that match, <laughs> Tom Selleck and him. Uh, but no, I, you know what? I, I'm going to go Castle in this one. I, I think Castle is just – he's on a, like uh, – I don't know, a bit of a, you know, a streak here for me personally. Not maybe a wins, but for me, he, he's on the rise. And so I'll, I'll go with him. You know, uh, I have a couple sayings in life, uh, some of them from the internet. Like obviously, if you can't be you, be Batman instead. Uh, and if Silas Young is in a wrestling match and you can't figure out who's going to win, you go with Silas Young. So I'm going with Silas Young. Um, mostly because I think he is a perfect candidate to fulfill the Ring of Honor World Television Championship slot if what I think is going to happen in the main event becomes a thing. Uh, but moving on from there, uh, we have Mark Briscoe taking on Donovan Dijak. Um, sort of a, a mini microcosm of what you're getting in the main event with a Briscoe taking on a House of Truth member here. Um, I, I love the promo from Mark and on this week's, uh, or last week's ROH. I think we talked about it on the, on the regular show, but again, I just have to say Mark is totally knows who he is, totally knows his character and he is awesome. Um, that being said, uh, this would be one of those things that I think I think Mark usually wins these kind of matches um, where it's him against kind of somebody that is not really anything at this point. So I would say Mark wins. It This could be a sneaky, sneaky good match here. Oh, man. I, 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 I'm a little bit torn here. Um, if one scenario doesn't work, this could be the scenario where... You know, Jack has to win this. Um, only because I, I having the House of Truth lose twice would be a bad thing for me personally. Uh, but you know what? I, I think the Sausage County Chicken is going to take this. Uh, I think <laughs> he is the Sausage County Chicken, and we all got to love it. And uh, that, I want that shirt with his face on it. Um, I love that. That's all. I just come on, the guy is great. Uh, I'm going to go with Mark Briscoe here, uh, just because of that promo last week. It was so impressive. I'm going to I'm going to go with my gut and say him. I'm going Mark Briscoe too, uh, mostly because of what I feel is going to happen in the main event. Also, because I think this is going to be sort of one of those matches where Donovan Dijak really gets a chance and a platform to show us what he can do, um, and really try to win us over in a losing performance. So. Uh, Mark Briscoe to get the win here for me, too. Uh, moving on, tag team match. Matt Seidel, ACH, teaming up to take on the decade. BJ Whitmer, Adam Page. Uh, this is really sort of a situation where ACH and Adam Page got beef with each other, but they got partners, and we got to have we gotta find room for these guys on this show, too. And uh, it keeps that tag division going, too, which is also important. Because um, not every promotion, uh, like the one we just talked about, will do this and have a random tag team match between two established teams. Who would have thought? On a, on a big show, even. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Who do you guys got? Uh, I'm going to say ACH and his partner. Uh, on this. Sidell. Yeah, Sidell. I mean, um, I just don't think uh, the decade, well, one half of the decade bores the crap out of me. So, uh, and you can guess that, you know, the bald guy. Um <laughs> Or, or the balding guy, whatever. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. They usually want to have your faces win these kind of things. So, You know, I, I'm trying to think of the formula here. And, you know, ROH doesn't always follow the same formula as everywhere else. So it's kind of hard to judge. Um, but wrestling formula sometimes sticks to all promotions. I think I think I'm gonna go the opposite way on this. I think the decade. I, I think Whitmer 
has been talking trash. I think he's going to want to back it up and prove that he can do something. I think the ACH is great. I love him. And, of course, you know, Matt Seidel, you can't go wrong with him. Uh, but these guys have looked great lately. But on the other the hand, they have not won everything, um, as we will talk about soon uh, in the near future. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I just think that it's going to have to go the decades away. That's just me personally. I, too, am leaning slightly towards the decade on this. Uh, the story here is that ACH uh, has beef with Adam Page because Adam Page thinks ACH is overrated and gets all these big matches and keeps losing them. I think this is another opportunity. I think we have Adam Page by hook or crook and preferably by crook beat ACH and maybe have this end up being for a certain championship that may or may not be vacant by the end of this evening. <laughs> so... Uh, I, and I think having ACH go over there could be a big way to sort of keep all this exciting. So I'm going to lean towards the decade, but I won't be surprised if Babyface has come out of this with the victory either. Uh, let's see, where do I want to go from here? Let's go to the six-man tag team match with The Kingdom, Adam Cole, Michael Bennett, Matt Taven, teaming up to take on the incoming Bullet Club, AJ Styles, and the Young Bucks. I, flippies galore, gentlemen. <laughs> Cliffy's galore, um, Maria showing ass, and the kingdom doing their stuff, and yeah, uh, Bullet Club wins. Uh, it's non-title, so Bullet Club wins. Uh, it should be really good, though. Looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a really fun match to watch. I think it'll probably be one of the better ones, in fact, and Glad to see Adam Cole back in the business. Uh, so nice to see him working. Uh, you know, especially after that big injury. Um, I'm looking forward to watching this. Picking a, a winner here is very, very difficult. I think the kingdom has a lot to offer, um, and, and them winning would not hurt my feelings at all. I just feel like the star power of the Bullet Club and their opportunity to take on a win here is just too much. Uh, when you get AJ Styles and, of course, the Young Bucks, who are overly popular, I, I think you got to lean towards them in this scenario. Otherwise, if it was any other tag team, I would really heavily follow, follow the uh, Kingdom on a victory. But nope, it's got to go to, of course, you know, the biggest Bullet Club team in New Japan. You know, uh, there's a little part of me that's gnawing at me and saying, how awesome would it be if Adam Cole pins AJ Styles to win this match? Um, I think that could set up a lot of stuff that you could do over here in Ring of Honor for Adam Cole to get him back on track towards that main event scene. Uh, but I'm with you guys. I think the Bullet Club does come out of this. I don't know if they're going to have AJ Styles take a loss like this on a pay-per-view, uh, especially with him having Okada coming up and don't really want to make him look all that weak for all of us over here who watch both promotions. So mm-hmm. I think Styles pins Taven or something yeah. like that. I can see that. And, you know, and, and once again, Adam Cole is the X factor here for me too, Paul. Yeah. It's because of him coming back. Do you really want to have him take a loss? But guess what? Him taking a loss is a lot less than AJ Styles he taking, a be loss. taking a loss. Taking a loss if he doesn't get pinned. So. That is true. That you got a great point there, Sean. Yeah, but you know, you might want to have him come back in a big way and get that big win for the team. Yeah, I mean, you that. could easily have one of the young bucks take the pins. So that, that's know. true. That's true. Uh, so we're, we're getting into our, our three main events here now, and the first one of these three main events is the No Disqualification Tag Team Match for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships. As the Addiction, who are the newly won champions and the newly revealed uh, members of the Knights of the Rising Dawn with Chris Saban, take on the team who they took the belts from, uh, Red Dragon, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly. Th- this should be brutal. Uh, especially on the Red Dragons part, who have been beaten beyond all sense and storyline and not storyline and real and not real wise. Uh, who, who do you guys have here? Mm, this is interesting because, as you noted, the addiction of just won these things. It'd be kind of weird for them to win them just so that the original team gets them back, but it's not unheard of either. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't really know where they're going to go. I mean, are they going to keep this going or not? I mean, it's not like R.H. just has a zillion tag teams or anything. Um, I mean, they, I mean yeah, that's, that's not counting the ones that are here and there. 
Uh, you know, um, I'll just say the addiction. You, the thing is, usually when you say the these like, oh, this is the last one you'll ever have, and all this kind of stuff, usually that means the the face team is gonna win. Uh, I'll just say the addiction or something. Just I don't know. This should, I'm really looking forward to this though. This should be really good. I think the fact that the addiction just won the titles does weigh heavily with me. Uh, just, just for me personally, I not only they a veteran team, but it makes sense because these guys are great heels. They can get under your skin. They've done a great job of doing it recently. Uh, plus, I look at the fact that you know maybe Bobby Fish could definitely use the win here. But Kyle O'Reilly, no matter what, win or loss, this guy has looked so strong. And done a lot, and, and I don't think he really has to win the tag belts back to do anything special. So I am going to choose the addiction because I really feel like they're the ones who would suffer the most with this loss. Uh, despite the fact that, you know, Ray Dragon isn't on the exactly a big, you know, winning streak or anything right now. Mm-hmm. I, I too am going to pick the addiction here, and it's mostly because I don't think Red Dragon. I think Red Dragon's going to get super close, and the X Factor that is Chris Saban is going to come in and play a major part here, uh, and do do them in, as it were, to allow his team and buddies to retain the championships. Uh, so we move on from there. We have a three way match to determine the number one contender of the ROH World Heavyweight Title, um, or World Title, excuse me. Uh, Michael Elgin takes on Moose and Roderick Strong, Mister ROH himself. This is a tough one, lads. Who do you got? Uh, Elgin's not winning now that he's in the G1. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's between Roderick Strong and and Moose. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, Roderick Strong has been saying that he wants to go for that world title or whatever. The, the one of his missions for the year. I'm going to say Roderick Strong takes this one. I, uh, Man, the thing is, I, I know Moose is undefeated and everything, but I can't imagine you're going to give Moose a title shot that quick. You know, it just, I don't know. I mean, I'll just say Roderick Strong, and I'm probably going to be wrong. But. Well, you know, who's to know where Moose is going to be, um, win loss wise, when we get to this next show. Um, but I am going to go Moose. I just weigh heavily uh, with him. I, I think this guy is great. I think he is the wave of the future. Roger Strong is great. And, you know, if he does end up being the guy to win this match, I'm totally cool with that. I think he, you know, deserves it like anybody else. But I want Moose to win. I think that this would be great to have him up there in that world title picture. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to have to be my choice. You know, looking at this with, yeah, as uh, Sean said, Elgin is going to be away for some time doing G1 with how many shows and how long that is going to take to settle over in Japan. Uh, I think that safely rules rules Elgin out. And if I'm on the booking team for Ring of Honor, I'm almost going back and forth on a day of, like, one day I'm thinking Moose, the next day I'm thinking Roderick Strong, and then the day of the show, I might even flip a coin. Um, because I think there's not a wrong choice here. I think Moose, if you want to keep going that way, is a fine choice. Um, although you're going to run into problems if you're trying to keep him undefeated whenever he does run into the eventual world champion, which we'll talk about in the next match. Um, and Roderick Strong, I think, is a safe bet, both feud-wise and um, sort of reputation-wise, because you can have him pin Elgin and still say Moose hasn't been pinned yet, so... That's the way I see this going. I think Roddy pins Elgin at the end of the day, but I will not be surprised if ROH goes with this here. I really won't. Um, so that, that brings us to our main event. We, we've set the table. We've had our appetizers. We've had some, some drinks here and there. We've already ordered dessert, but the main meal is coming right in front of you that costs you your $30 for the night. It's Jay Briscoe and Jay Lethal. Belt for belt, both the World Heavyweight title and the television title are on the line. It's a 60-minute Iron Man match. This is going to be a match of the year candidate. There's there's no conversation about that. Who comes away with the belts here, gentlemen? Title for title, Jess. Can you believe it? Yes. Uh, 
I'm sorry, I'm d doing a horrible girl of monsoon impression, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, man, damn, this is this is gonna be so good. Uh, you know, I don't think you do this with Jay Lethal for him to come up short. I just don't think you do. Jay Briscoe has had the title for so long now. He beats Jay Lethal. It's like, who else is there for this guy? Um, I think with Lethal, you start a whole new chapter for ROH. You have so many guys. This is kind of like the Seth Rollins thing. You have so many guys that could face Lethal for that title. I think it solidifies him as a big star for ROH. He wins here. I mean, I don't know what else Jay Briscoe has to prove. He's been through everything here for ROH. I don't think he needs to win this match to say anything. Um, you know, depending on how many falls they want to do and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that that can also help determine the strength of everything. But I just think Jay Lethal has to win this, and he needs to win this so badly. You know, looking at this, I mean, I think that Jay definitely would be the favorite here um, just because of his stature, everything he's done. Well, they're both named Jay, Gary. You want know, true, Jay Briscoe. I other call I call it the other guy lethal. I don't even mention Jay with him. <laughs> I hope that's not bad. I just don't call him Jake. Uh, but you're correct, Sean, and I am talking about Briscoe. Uh, <laughs> Jay Briscoe is a guy that I, I think is going to be you know, heavily favored only because of the fact of his stature, uh, everything he's able to do, you know, and we've seen a lot of him. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to totally agree with Sean on this. I really feel like this is Jay Lethal's time. He's going to take that title belt, the ROH title, and he's going to hold it, and he's going to try to do the same thing that he's done with the television title. And I think that's going to get him even more heat, and it's going to be beautiful, and it's going to be one of those things where people are just going to can't wait to see that next big feud. Who's going to take the ROH title away from Jay Lethal? You know, that'll be the whole thing next, and so that's going to be great. Looking forward to that. And I just think, um, you know, Paul, I really think that you're right. I think this is going to be a huge match, probably one of those finalists for the match of the year. At least I'm hoping so. If it's not, I'm going to be very disappointed because I've been waiting a long time for this. I know a lot of other people have. I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, if I didn't set the table enough for you, Jay Lethal, 437 day plus days as television champion with 31 successful defenses. Jay Briscoe hasn't lost by pinfall or submission in two years. I just how how do you don't make a match bigger than this in Ring of Honor right now? This is the match. This is the pay per view. This is the time where you make Jay Lethal the guy, uh, and everything comes together. You have the best heel in wrestling at on top of your promotion, and you just you run with it as long as it lasts. And sweet, this, this is going to be epic. I. I'm so mad I have to work Friday because I want to watch this show live, but I have to catch it on Saturday after I get off work on Saturday. So, uh, just I, this this is if you're not ordering this show, you're missing something special. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree. And you know, the the one thing that also helps me choose Lethal is the fact that Truth Martini is going to be right there by his side. And that is going to be the best part because uh, he is going to definitely find ways to make sure Lethal wins. <laughs> yeah, you can say he's going to literally throw the book at Briscoe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, although he is a DVD, it's three though. in the morning. I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love it. So, uh, but no, that is, that is awesome. We are looking forward to this whole best in the world of ROH. 2015 it is going to be so fun um so we'll be definitely covering this show next sunday night right guys we're going to be talking about this breaking it down going over it you know the reason we are doing it on sunday is also partly because me and i'm pretty sure paul will both have to watch this on saturday i'm not sure what sean's going to be i have a live. birthday party to go to for um actually she's in our group um she actually lives like 10 minutes away from me i didn't even know that um anaya doesn't really get to do a whole lot with people with um kids like outside of her daycare so i got invited and i was like why not you know yeah um 
she gets to go swim in the pool and make some new friends, and I get to talk wrestling with people, so that's never a bad thing. Uh, <laughs> and then I got to work right after, so I, I wouldn't be able to watch it till like, midnight, and that means we I wouldn't get done watching it until 3 in the morning, so it'd be kind of useless for us to try to do it on Saturday, so Sunday it is. Awesome. So we'll be checking out that show Sunday night. We'll be covering Ring of Honor, Best in the World 2015 for everybody, and we can't wait to do it. Uh, so we're going to do a few housekeeping things, kind of give you some of the, the stuff that we've been doing, some of the things that Sean's been doing in some other podcasts. I uh, just want to let everybody know a big keynote. We did not break down the go-home show that led up to this prediction. Uh, there's a lot of things that have happened that if you do get a chance to watch the show on Saturdays, like myself, um, Paul and Sean both have not had a chance to watch that show. So we are not going to talk about that until this next Thursday. Uh, we may not even get into it too deep, but we're going to break down that show then. Uh, just to be fair for all of us to be able to talk about it. So if you're wondering what the heck these guys didn't talk about the lead-in, that's why. Uh, but anyway, well, guys, you know, uh, let's go ahead and give the, everybody kind of the what's going to be happening around the other podcast. So, Sean, let's do it. I should probably start doing this much earlier in the show. Not not the plugging part, but the plugging our show, this show part, because the longer this goes, the less chance we have of people, you know, especially new people listening towards the end. But, hey, if you got to the end of this show, we appreciate it because – Hey, that's cool, you know. Um, uh, hopefully you enjoy this. If this is your first time listening to us. You know, so I know sometimes these pay-per-view review things, um, people are going around looking for them, uh, you know, on Monday mornings or Monday afternoons. So, um, you know, we appreciate it. Uh, you choosing us and choosing to listen to us, that's nice. Um Hopefully you'll stick around for our regular shows. Uh, we are the Every Wrestling Fan Podcast. You know, you may not enjoy every promotion that we usually cover every week, but we do it because, you know, we take the name of this podcast seriously and try to cover as much as we can. Um, we are on, if you, if you for some reason are listening, you know, on 401 or... On uh, the VOC Nation, which we are proud to be a part of now, or wherever you are, we have our own iTunes and Stitcher and TuneIn and all these places that we are available. You can go rate and review us on Stitcher and iTunes because that helps us be seen by more people. Um, the higher you rate things and review things, the more more than actual like hits and listens to these shows is the reviews it makes it go higher and higher up the charts. So, or that's what you know. Those people at at Apple tell me. I don't. I don't know if they're telling you the truth or not, but that's what it seems like they're telling me. Um. So, yeah, that'd be nice if y'all did that. It, you know, I know it takes a little bit of time, but it's it's always nice for people to do. Um. That being said, uh, first of all, uh, one of our Usually one of our cohorts on these review shows, we did it too late, and, and he also didn't watch the show live this week. Um, he said his girlfriend had a birthday, so he did not get to watch Money in the Bank live. But I'm going to be doing uh, Wrestle Kingdom 9 with with uh, Harry on Friday's Wrestling Unwrapped. So if you like listening to Harry talk on the Raw Reaction, which you should listen to every Monday night... Um, at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, you can hear him and myself break down that show. I went back while I was at work because I was uh, working a 10-hour shift today and listened to our old review of Wrestle Kingdom 9. That was a bit different <laughs> for us. <laughs> because I think that was like our me and Gary's like real first time getting to watch New Japan and everything. So I sounded so not confident in what I was saying. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not much better talking about it with Harry. Um, but, yeah, um, I did the first of what's going to be many E3 press conference reaction podcasts this week. Um, so if you didn't get to catch the Bethesda po uh, press conference, or whenever you did, and, you know, you're looking for places that want to give you, you know, their reaction to the show, just like you probably have a reaction to the show, 
Um, myself and Mark, of course, he's my normal co-host, and Randy Isbell, who's the co-host uh, with Gary and I on the sports podcast, along with his podcast co-host, uh, Wes. Um, we all just broke it down, you know, thought, gave our thoughts on the show, what, you know, best things to come out of it, and we'll be doing that for Microsoft and Sony and all those tomorrow, and then, you know, Nintendo and all the rest of them on Tuesday, so... Lots to look forward to there. And on Tuesday night as well, Matt and I will be breaking down the U.S.-Nigeria game for the Women's World Cup. So if you're watching that game, you know, we will be talking about that as well. So, of course, don't miss our Thursday show. We'll be reviewing the Raw um, post-pay-per-view, TNA, as we're getting close to that same anniversary, as Gary mentioned, the go home to best in the world, uh, NXT, Lucha Underground, all that stuff. So, yeah, lots of great stuff, and we can't wait to do the show. Uh, you never know who may pop in. Uh, our good friend Chris Limsky, you know, wasn't able to join us tonight, but he may pop in on Thursday night and kind of give us his thoughts on, of course, Money in the Bank and the go uh, the, the uh, whole, you know. Raw that's following Money in the Bank. So lots of great stuff. Uh, we, If you're a first-time listener, like Sean said, we're glad to have you. Uh, we'll welcome you back. And, uh, of course, you know, go do that stuff, rate, review, and go join our Facebook group. It is growing daily. I am very thrilled about that. We've got more and more people uh, coming in and joining our group, and it's a lot of fun to see this thing go and everybody get to enjoy talking wrestling on the Facebook page. So do that. And, uh, guys, we are done here. So until Thursday... Always remember, if you're not living life to the max, not living life at all, you know it. Please.